Hey, our next speaker is uh, Ori Lahav, our, who's going to be talking about release acquire consistency. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. So this is a joint work with uh, Niki Yanarakis and uh, Victor Ophiadis. So maybe after this beginning of the session, there is no need, but generally, weak memory models try to provide formal sound semantics for realistic high-performance concurrency. As we, as we actually seen, while designing a, a, a weak memory model, there is a natural tension between programmability on the one side and performance on the other side. So the well-known memory model of sequential consistency, SC, interleaving semantics is on this side. It is relatively easy, let's say, to program with, but it suffers from bad performance on modern hardware. It requires a lot of additional uh, synchronization. On the other hand, very relaxed memory models would be on this side. They will, it will have very efficient implementations, but will be very difficult to program with. So in this work, what we decided to explore is the release acquire memory model, referred to it as RA, that we believe is somewhere on the middle of this line. So what is release acquire? Take C11 and restrict all the reads to be acquire reads, all the writes to be release writes, and all the atomic updates to be acquire release atomic updates. To start understand this, it's better, uh, it's good to check this, the difference between these two famous examples that actually appeared in previous talks. So store buffering, initially everything is zero. The first thread sets X to one and then prints Y. The second thread, sets y to one and then prints x. And under a least acquired memory model, unlike sequential consistency, it may happen that both threads may print zero. So when you run this program, you actually see this. And one explanation, perhaps, is that these two, order, these two commands, since those are different locations, can be reordered by the compiler or by, or by the hardware. And then we can see this behavior. There is a difference with this message passing example. So this uh, thread sets m to 42 and then x to one. And this thread waits until it sees this x1 and then prints m. This does not have any weak behaviors under, under release acquired. The only thing that can happen is that if that m, the only thing that can be printed is 42. Here there is it, uh, the intuitive explanation is that reordering of writes on this side is not allowed. Reordering of reads is not allowed. The, the only thing that can be reordered is reads, writes, and then reads. The formal explanation in C11 is given in terms of these execution graphs. So this is a consistent execution graph that I read zero in both sides. And intuitively, the reason is that this read is not aware of this write. There is no path from this write to this read, so I can read the original value. However, this execution here, when I try to read, after reading x1 from here, I try to read m0, the initial value for m, this execution is not consistent because we have this path starting from the write m, write x, read x, read m, which introduces this happens before. And now, and then uh, we cannot read the earlier value for M. We must, we, this, we are aware of this one, so you must read uh, uh, this one or later. So formal definition of this memory model, execution is consistent if you can find two relations, reads from, every read should be mapped to a corresponding write, such that happens before, which in our case, focusing on release acquire is just the transitive closure of program order and reads from relation, is a reflexive relation. And in addition, you should find this modification order. This should be a total order on all writes to the same locations, such that none of these patterns occur. So you cannot, modification order cannot contradict happens before. You cannot read overwritten value. This was the, um, the case in the message passing. If you try to read zero, you, f you don't fulfill this requirement. And this has to do with updates. So atomic update must read from the immediate predecessor in modification order. It cannot read from earlier uh, write in, while doing an atomic update. Now, the good news about this memory model is that it's not that, that crazy. It's relatively... Uh, um, well behaved. So it has first as a part of C11 verified compilation schemes to the, uh, the hardware of TSO and Power. It supports the intended optimizations and in particular 
write x, read y can be reordered by the compiler, let's say, to read y, write x, and then continue with further optimizations. <coughs> it enjoys the DRF theorem, unlike the full C11. If there are no data races under SC, then you're guaranteed that there are no weak behaviors. So even without understanding anything about the weak memory, one, once you prove that your program has, has no data races under the sequential consistency memory model, you know that you don't have any non-sequential consistent behaviors. It has monotonicity, which is maybe seems trivial. If you add synchronization, it doesn't introduce new behaviors. This means that if you take two threads that were in parallel and put them one after another, I, want don't, I, I don't want to get new behaviors for the new program. And while it seems trivial, full C11 and the TSO hardware memory model doesn't have, don't have this, this property. And there are uh, f uh, several works, previous works, that provide program logics for release acquire, so one can reason about this program, about programs in this memory model. And now the topic for the talk is three drawbacks that we try to address of, of this memory model. The first one, it allows, still allows some dubious behaviors that we want to forbid. Second is related to SC fences. And the third, we would like to have, in addition to these axioms and declarative semantics, we would like to have some intuitive operational semantics to work with. So let's start with the first one. Consider this program. So this thread sets x to 1, y to 2, and then a to 1. And the last thread here sets y to 1, x to 2, and b to 1. And the middle thread, it prints a, b, x, and y. And the question, can we, this program print 1, 1, 1, 1? Under SC, of course not, because if I see this A and B1, then all the writes already happen, so either X or Y should be 2. And reordering cannot explain such a behavior, because reordering of writes is not allowed, release acquire accesses. Reordering of reads is not allowed, so this is actually nothing can be reordered. And in fact, when you run such a program, after you compile and run it, you don't observe this behavior in power or x86 TSO. So Release acquire, however, allows this very weird behavior. So this would be the execution. There, this is the, actually the only execution that reads only one. There is no much freedom here. I must take modification order from the right of y2 to the right of y1, for example, because here, when I read y1, I am aware of this right. There is this path. So modification order must go like this, and similarly for x. And this execution is deemed consistent. Now, what we suggest is to Notice this cycle and forbid this kind of cycles. There is here a cycle using program order modification on y, program order modification order on x. On x. And these are exactly the cycles that we suggest to forbid. So we define strong release acquire consistency, SRA. If it, uh, execution is SRA consistent, first it should be release acquire consistent. And in addition, happens before, and the union of all the modification order should be an acyclic relation. Now, while it is stronger, it is not very far from release acquire, because if the program has no write right traces, unlike the program in the previous uh, slide, so no two threads are trying to, uh, trying to write to the same location concurrently, this SRA and RA coincide because modification order in this case is actually already included in happens before, which is acyclic. Now, we are able to prove that while this is a stronger model, it provides stronger guarantees, there is no price to pay. So the same compiler optimizations that are sound for release acquire are sound for strong release acquire. The compilation schemes for x86 TSO and to power are correct as is. Actually, the, we already had the strong guarantee that we provide. And in fact, for power, we show something stronger. If you take a release acquire program, compile it to power, then the, what power models guarantees you is exactly what strong release acquire guarantees you. So this would mean that there is no any addition, any strengthening of the model that can be done forbid more behaviors without changing compilation, co existing compilation of C11 to power. And here we base on a declarative model of power recently published by Alga. Second subject is connected uh, strongly to the previous talk, has to do with SC fences. So we want to have SC fence at, uh, in addition to release acquire. SC fence is the strongest fence in, in, in instruction provided by, by C11. And the, if you put SC fence in, the store, in, in both sides, in the store buffer, for example, you would uh, get rid of this weak behavior that prints zero in both threads. And the explanation is this execution now is inconsistent with the, with the fences, 
And here I actually use the semantics that suggested and proved sound in previous talk. And it shows uh, uh, that there is this cycle here and between the two fences and the execution is inconsistent. However, these fences are still too weak. So this is another uh, famous example, independent reads, independent writes. This thread prints, uh, sets x to one. The last thread sets y to one. And the middle thread, this prints x and then y, this prints y and then x. And in under Elise Acquire, and in fact, if you compile this to power, you can see this, both threads can print one zero. So this one is aware of this right, but not aware uh, of this right, and this one is the, op for the opposite. Now this is the consistent execution. So this is fine, but what is surprising is that actually if you add fences, SC fences, between every two commands in between the reads here, this execution is still in C11. Uh, in, 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 actually, even with the strengthening suggested in previous talk, is consistent. So somehow SC, fe SC fences don't, don't uh, fulfill their, their job. What we suggest is to have a stronger model for SC fences and actually, using something that already exists in C11 without defi uh, defining new relations and new requirements. Model SC fences as if they were just acquire release atomic updates of some distinguished location that we call fence location that is nowhere accessed in any, any other places. And what the reason it works is that release acquire semantics enforces all these fence uh, events, these acquire uh, release atomic updates, to be ordered by happens before. So for this example, we will take the two fences. Now they are updates. So this is a special fence location, and I update it from zero to zero. The values that, uh, uh, don't matter. And this execution now, it's not complete. I still need reads from for this. Where do I read this zero from? And where do I read this zero from? And I need modification order between these two, because modification order should be a total order on all the writes, including updates, to the same location. So let's say I take modification order from left to right. Now the reads from are dictated because I must read from the immediate predecessor. I will read from here and here I read from here. But now I have this path from this uh, right to this read and it introduces happens before. And now the execution is inconsistent because while doing this read, I am aware of this right and I'm still reading the initial, the initial value. So this execution is inconsistent, and this fences, the SC fence, the, this modeling of SC fences forbids this weak behavior. Now, while this is of stronger fences, we're, and, and we don't uh, suggest to compile them as RMWs, as atomic updates. We want to use the same compilation, and we prove that this is actually fine to do. Under TSO, it's relatively easy to see. SC fence is compiled in the TSO instruction of M fence. And atomic update is compiled to lock exchange, but if I never use the value of this exchange, then mFence and lock exchange have exactly the same operational effect in TSO machine. They wait for the buffer to be flushed, so these two things are equivalent. Power is more complicated. We prove that sync events that correspond to SC fences are equivalent to acquire release atomic updates of an other, uh, otherwise unused location. Again, for power, this is a strong result because it's, you cannot find any strengthening of the semantics of SC fences uh, without uh, having a, a stronger, a different compilation for power. So with this uh, strengthened SC fences, we were able to prove reduction theorems to SC. The first one is very basic. If you have a fence between every two commands, you're guaranteed only SC behaviors. This is sometimes not enough. We want to do a bit better, of course. We know that under TSO, it suffices to have fences between racy writes and racy reads. So racy write for X, and later on, let's say racy read of Y. Only in these cases, I need fences. I don't need other fences, which in release acquire are generally needed. But we were able to prove that for client server programs, it suffices to place fences just with the pattern of TSO between writes and reads. And client server programs is a large family of programs where we have multiple clients and one server, and all the communication is done between client and server, so there is no shared variable that is shared to two clients. And in fact, we also require here that there are no write write traces, so a client and the server cannot concurrently write to the same location. In the paper, we apply this theorem for RCO implementation, uh, that is an, an important example of client server program, and we show that very few fences suffice for in this implementation to guarantee that, this, that it has only SC behaviors, no weak behaviors. 
And the final, final uh, uh, contribution is operational presentation of this memory model. So if you don't like all these graphs, it's time to uh, wake up. We believe it's easier to understand, and I think it's uh, a matter of taste, but we believe it's easier to understand the, the, the declarative semantics. And you can simulate step-by-step -step execution of the program. You can think about a partial of the execution of the program instead of executing the full program. And we hope this will be later on a foundation from some verification techniques, model checking, and maybe proving soundness of program logics. So the operational semantics should be simple to have this, and I, I think it is simple. I would give the example with the message passing uh, example. So M is 42, and then X is 1. This waits until X is 1, and then prints M. I want to see that only M, and only 42 can be printed. So the, this is the structure of the machine. Each CPU is running one thread. We have a local memory, so there is no notion here of global memory. Each CPU has its own local memory. And there are these, there are these outgoing message buffers that mes messages that CPU one wants to publish for other CPUs. So let's start running this. First M is 42, let's say. So I update my memory, and I put the message in the buffer. And then X is one. I do the similar thing, update the memory, put the message in the buffer. And this thread, it can spin in this loop because it has x0, but at some point it can non-deterministically choose to read a message from this buffer. So it will take the M42, put it in the memory, and publish it, and similarly for x1. And now it will get out of this while loop because it has now x1, and it prints M, the value that will be printed is 42. The reason it works is because the order in which the, uh, the messages were issued in this queue is exactly the order in which the, the other CPU took them. So we cannot have different value for M. Now this like this, it's still too simple to be sound for uh, SRA, strong release acquire. We need a bit more. So consider this example. This thread sets X to six, the other one to seven. This one checks if, S, if X is seven and prints go. This one checks if X is six and prints go. And release acquire semantics, and of course our stronger, stronger release acquire semantics, ensure that Go cannot be printed twice. It is not possible that this is seven and this is six. The reason if I have, for example, modification order from left to right, I cannot see six here, and the other way I cannot see seven here. Our, my machine, the machine that I suggested the previous slide, can get this weird behavior. So you write six, you write seven, you take the message, you take the message, you print twice Go. So I want to forbid this, and to order, in order to do this, our machine will also have timestamps for the messages and a global timestamp table to uh, mimic this modification order. So initially, the timestamp of X is zero. Every location has a timestamp. And when I do the first write, I will write six, and I get timestamp one from the global timestamp, and I put the message together with the timestamp in the message buffer. The other thread will take we can, can do the write of x7, again, getting a timestamp that is larger, two, and a global, update, a global timestamp table is updated. Now, when the, the first thread, can, the first CPU, can process this message and update the memory and put the message, but when the second uh, CPU processes the message, this one, it sees that the timestamp here is less than the timestamp that it already has in the, in the um, local memory, so it skips the message, and it skips its own message, because, again, because timestamps is not larger, and it will, cannot, it will cannot get six here. So this go will be printed at most once in any run of the machine. So for this machine, we were able to prove that it is exactly what a strong release acquire gives you. To summarize, release acquire fragment, uh, we believe is well-behaved uh, memory model, and we propose to s uh, slightly strengthen it in order to first forbid these weak behaviors that are unobservable in implementations. Second, have a, uh, to get a simple fence semantics we uh, that allows SC reduction theorems and to have an intuitive operational semantics. What is important is the strengthening of the model both in terms of the HBMO acyclic and for the fences. There's no additional implementa implementation cost with the same compiler optimizations and the same compilation schemes uh, work as that exist for C11, still work. That's it, thank you.
so just a brief comment. So in your, um, <clears throat> your uh, sequentially consistent uh, fences, um, in essence, what you did there is you said that these fences should be totally ordered by happens before. That's in effect what it does. Yes, by, by modeling them as, as atomic, uh, acquire release atomic hap, hap updates, you get a total order on all fences by, by happens okay. before. Exactly. So, so that's uh, similar to the, uh, the push construct in the relaxed memory model calculus that uh, Michael Sullivan and I have been working on. So it's, it's not C11, but uh, it's a yes. point of contact there. Yes, our contribution here was to show that this is, it's not too strong, so it's actually you get this guarantee by compiling C11 programs. Sure, yeah. Just a, a small point on the SC fences. So as I understand it, the weakness that you see in C11 is forced by the Itanium spec. Now, whether you care about that is another question, and whether Itanium implementations ever exploited that weakness is not clear, but the... So the maybe, do, do you care about it? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, as I understand, I'm not an expert for Itanium, but I understood that already the, the um, relaxed accesses are mapped to release acquire accesses while compiling that, and with release acquire accesses and SC fences, you cannot get this weak behaviors on Itanium. But uh, I'm not 100% sure here. Anyway, I hope it's already obsolete there. I don't know. I, I think if you were trying to push this to the C++11 committee, you would probably find people that care. Whether they should care, I don't have an opinion. Thank you. So I don't have any direct knowledge about any of this, but the word on the street that I hear is that the itaniums that they're making now are not itaniums underneath the hood. And so I think that I think it is obsolete except on very old uh, itanium hardware, but I don't I don't actually know that for a fact. That's just what I hear. Thank you.